So I published this tweet on August 25th, 2022, which means that it has been around two weeks since I upgraded my phone to the Android 13 release of Graphene OS. So what I'll be doing in today's video is talking about some of the changes that were made in Android 13. It's worth noting that a lot of these changes come from Android 13 or AOSP, not from the Graphene OS team. So if you have any issues with them or dislike them, you'll have to take that up with the Android open source project. So I also want to mention that I'm a pretty basic user when it comes to my cellular device. I keep things pretty simple. If you wanted to equate that to the color palette that I've chosen for my life, which is light gray, dark gray, and a different shade of gray, then you can see I keep things pretty simple. And then lastly, before I get into the demo, if you are getting any sort of value from using Graphene OS, please consider donating to the project. I'm pretty sure the developers could get a job at a regular tech company and make way more money, but they are choosing to work on this instead. So if you do have the means, please consider contributing. So for the TLDR on this, the Android 13 build of Graphene OS has been super solid. I haven't had any issues with it. I know some people had issues with always on VPNs and blocking their connection. I don't use an always on VPN on my personal device, so I haven't run across this issue. So on the left side of the screen is a Google Pixel 5a running Graphene OS Android 12, the last build they had before Android 13. And on the right side of the screen is a Google Pixel 6 running the latest Android 13 build of Graphene OS. So the first big change I've noticed is some changes in the swipe down menu. So if you use additional user profiles at all, you'll notice that the location has changed for where you switch user profiles. It's now in the bottom right hand corner instead of right below the permission buttons up top here. It still has the same functionality, just a different location. They also rearranged it and put the power button down there as well. The pencil has remained up top, but a little bit different design change. A new feature you will notice on this screen now is active apps. You're also going to be seeing a lot of the top of my head in this video because I'm looking down at the phones on my desk to record this, but I thought that you, the viewer, seeing this part of my head would make this video feel a little bit more personal, so enjoy the view. So the active app screen, this shows apps that are active and running, but you're not necessarily using them. This improves the app functionality, but this can also affect battery life as the little description on the screen says. In my case, I have Briar and Signal both running. Those are both messaging apps that I use, and those are always running in the background. Another big change, at least for me, someone who does a lot of screen recordings on my device, is they finally brought back the show touches on screen for screen recordings. You'll see here on the Pixel 6, you can see where I'm touching the screen. On my other device, you can't see where I'm touching, even though I am because it's not recording those touches in the screen recording. For some reason that was removed from Android 12, but it's back in Android 13 and I think it's pretty helpful. So those are the main changes in the app drawer menu. The next setting is a pretty important one, I think, and this one relates to privacy. It's the notification pop-up after you install a new app. If you ever used iOS, you probably saw a similar notification. So as an example, I installed Element on both devices and if we open the app, we can see on Android 13, we have a pop-up that asks us if we want to allow Element to send us notifications. On Android 12, we get nothing. So this is pretty great right off the bat. If you don't want to allow notifications, don't allow, and you're good to go. Another handy feature that was released is improvements to copy and paste functionality. So on Android 12, if you want to do copy and paste something, you select it, copy it, it's copied. On Android 13, you make your selection similar to Android 12, click copy, but this time you see this little pop-up in the bottom left-hand corner. You can select that, and now you can edit whatever was in your clipboard. So let's say I just wanna get rid of part of this, click done. Now when I go to paste this, it pastes the edited copy instead of the original text that we copied. So that can be helpful because sometimes it's a little bit difficult to make your selection on exactly what you wanna copy. So maybe you copy more than you wanted, you go into the editor, edit what you copied, and then you get the text that you wanted. So this next one is probably the biggest visual change in my opinion, and that is the active playing screen when you're playing some sort of media on your device. But in Android 13, we get a nice view showing the album art, we get the on-screen controls, and we also have an animated play bar. And I just wanna compliment the designer who developed that play bar. I feel like it's one of those cases where Someone was like, you'll never get that change to go through because that doesn't look appropriate. But they snuck it in there, got it approved. So once you see it, you can't unsee it. But again, great design change. It looks good. Definitely a big improvement. 
So this last change is very subtle and I actually had to double check on Android 12 to make sure it was an Android 13 feature. So when you go ahead and plug in your device to charge, you now get a fancy full screen animation, which I'm a big fan of. I think it looks pretty nice. So while it's subtle, it just adds a nice little design touch to the OS. So those are the major changes I noticed for my use cases. There weren't a ton of visual changes from Android 12 to Android 13. Android 11 to Android 12 had some very vast visual design changes. If you are interested in seeing all of the Android 13 related changes, Esper.io has a great blog post summarizing all the changes that were made, and there are quite a few of them, far more than I discussed today. So if you're interested in hearing from me outside of this weekly video, you can head on over to sideofburritos.com and sign up for my somewhat weekly newsletter. Please be aware that this is you consenting to voluntarily reading my writing.